Okay, this is the second video on rotoscoping, where we set the camera up, set the right angles, make sure it didn't distort, and it was a real pain. Um, let's take the rotoscoping to a new level, where we just don't have a single vantage point, but we have any dynamic pose, any angle we want. And we're gonna do this by cheating. Okay, we know you can already draw, but you want help getting the animation references so it looks nice and fluid. But you don't want to go through the problems that we had last time where I had the camera set up because you can't set the camera up for everything. Like say you have the dude here, instead of just using the camera to walk by, say you wanted a dynamic scene where the guy's actually picking something up and reaching forward like that. We're not Marvel Studios, but there is a way to get that kind of dynamic any pose, any walk cycle, anything from any angle for free. Um, you can see here I'm in um, something called Daz Studio. It'll be in the link below. But you can actually use this to output any animation you want from any vantage point into a series of frames that you can then use your art to go back and sketch over. So here I am. This isn't a tutorial on Daz Studio, but I'm just going to go through it real quick so you can see how I go to get my animations for my, my game. So I'm just going to add any dude in here. Of course, he's naked, so we better fix that, find him a shirt. So let's just go through a basic one. And this is kind of what we wanted based on our crash test dummy. It's pretty close, but now we're in an open world. So you can actually pose this and put the camera wherever you want. So if we wanted to, we could actually have this. Uh, if we apply this animation, double click it, now the animation's applied. Now if we just play it, we can play it while we position our camera. So we do want this ending here. We can move it to back to the side. It's just a quick example. Rotate it around, push it back, maybe push him off frame a little bit, zoom in a little bit more for dramatic effect, and say this is what we want. So we just export these as frames, cut it, and we go back and rotoscope. But it, just for going back to our example, we want something that's going to match what the purpose of our game is. So, okay, now we get our guy and we have a single pose selected where it's a pretty useful pose. It's gonna be, the guy walks along and actually turns, and goes either right or left. It's something, you know, it would be very, very difficult. Okay. Okay, so now we, ha we have our guy in place. He has clothes and he's happy. But now we want to animate him with something that would be very difficult to do with video. Say we want to shoot him and get the frames of him actually turning into a doorway, say. And again, we, we're just going to use him for reference for our hand-done artwork later. So here is a good animation where he actually kind of pauses and he turns into the doorway. And we're going to use that just part of it. So we're going to apply that animation to our person and see what it looks like. Just the bare minimum number of frames. And there he starts to turn. So right about there. And that is at frame 49. So here on the start range, we're going to type in 49. And then we're going to continue on until he's pretty much in the doorway. Start, stop there. And our current frame is 118. Okay, now most animations are running at 30 frames a second, which is what we see here. But our game is actually set for 15 to 10 frames a second. And that'll save us a lot of work on the render or the hand drawing part. So right now we have whatever that number of frames is, a total of 127. We can cut that down in third by changing this to 10 frames a second. So 39 frames. And again, once we get to the um, Photoshop, 
we can cut down that even more if we don't need that resolution. So now we're going to go to our render settings and export these as frames. Render settings. We're going to go ahead and make sure we have an empty folder. We do. And we're going to select image series instead of still image. We're going to use an image series. And we're going to keep it at JPEG because we're not doing transparencies. We're going to be drawing over it and add our own, our own style. We're just going to keep these as JPEGs because we don't need transparencies. We're just using it as <clears throat> motion reference. We've got our folder selected and we are going to start it from 16 to 39. It's even less work than we had, had thought so. So we are going to just go ahead and do render. And it's going to render out those uh, handful of frames, those 20 frames. And again, this isn't a tutorial in drawing. This just shows you, gives you one other tool to be able to use to create your animation references to go back and do your artwork on top of it. Similar to what I did with the video camera. Okay, hope this helps. Again, the software is free and you can pretty much do whatever you can imagine. And um, this literally can take 10 minutes. Okay, thanks. Bye.